What does that even mean? <laughs> we're going to take our pod and we're going to cast it into the wind. I was told. Oh, never mind. <laughs> everyone i'm ryan and i'm steven this is 60 cycle hum the guitar buying selling money fixing breaking playing reviewing uh playing trading fixing breaking modding <laughs> smashing podcast oh yeah and, and i was told that if you weren't catching anything to cast your pod to the other side of the boat ah That's what yeah I was the biblical reference there mm. huh is that a biblical reference by the way besides all the things that steve said uh this is the podcast where we go through Various used guitar ads from the internet, the craziest of Craigslist, the most ridiculous of Reverb, the most egregious of eBay, the most offensive of OfferUp, the most frivolous of Facebook Marketplace, and they're all sent by you and all year long, or until we decide to stop doing it, we're going to decide one winner, one favorite ad from each episode, and award the person who sent it. A $25 gift card. So just keep that in mind. Email right there. That's our email address. Send us links to ads, screen grabs, in case we don't click the links while they're active so that we can feature the ads. Let's talk about this first one. What was Fender thinking? Title, short scale Fender Telecaster with case. Item is used and is subject to small imperfection. There's, there, there's no freaking... There's no description here. Yeah, because it's from Goodwill. <laughs> you know how Goodwill rolls. This is from Michael Krauss, right? Yep. This is from our good buddy, Michael Krauss. Have you ever seen one of these, Steve? Is that a Telecaster with a... What is that bridge? Is it an Evertune? This has got an Evertune on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> so this, this is funky... Not just because of the Evertune. This is a short scale Telecaster. It is a 24 inch scale Telecaster. The oh, it's modded for an effort. I was like, right, is right. That the real? Evertune is not stock. <laughs> <laughs> These came out, oh, I think like 2013, 2014, something I like that. I do not remember these. I didn't remember them either. When I saw this ad, I was like, I got to do a little bit of light reading on this. And wow, I went to you, check you prices. Did the work. I did a little bit of work. Uh, Everything's smaller about it. The body is looks a little bit different because it's just everything's pulled back like an inch in every direction. It reminds me of. Uh, are you? Do you remember Saint Blues guitars? Uh, that sounds familiar. They make a Telus Telecaster style body that's. It has the same sort of thing where it's, it's very clearly a reference to a Telecaster, right? But there's something ever so off about it, like the way that's that like just. Not you're not you can't quite put your finger on what's not right about it. The way the waist dips in it just feels yeah. a little bit deeper here, a little bit sharper. Everything's just a little bit more compact. I I started checking out prices on these because you know you know I love my little guitars. You know I love you my duo d- song. You do, do love them. I do love my little guitars. He does I, love them. Also, this thing has a a guild pickup in the neck, which is a really wild like zig on a guitar yeah. that's already zagging. This guitar is zigging and zagging here. Well, this would have probably been during the time when Fender still owned Guild, right? Yeah, possibly. Probably. Is so, that actually a Guild pickup or just... That's what I saw in, in listings for it, like descriptions of it. It has a Guild pickup in the neck. The, like, here's a picture of one. You can tell that this modified one... They had to put a different bridge on it, and the bridge doesn't connect with the pit guard quite right because this one that was on Guitar Center uh, used right. as B stock has a bridge that fits in that little uh, yeah. pit guard cut a lot better. I kind of like. I w- I was able to find the pricing information for these mm-hmm. on Reverb, and back in April, one sold for two fifty. Which is wild. And then they've gone up and up and up, and one sold for a thousand. There's been a couple north of seven fifty, and then one recently sold looks like maybe mid four hundreds. 
If I could track one of these down in the 300s, I think I'm going to have to pull the trigger. I'm looking for at one right now that's over a thousand dollars, and it's got some chunks missing from the from the paint. Like what happened to these? Like did Josh Scott do a video of these all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> the pickup is a Guild HB1. And you know what's, what else is, is crazy about these? I, when I was doing a search. What's with, crazy, Ryan? I was doing a search on eBay. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of options for replacement pick guards for this model. What? It's such a specific model. And you, like you have the pick of the litter for pick guards. There's some pick guard maker out there that just made pick guards in every material for this model. Okay, so this pickup is um, designed from to be in like the old S one hundreds from Guild, the Polara model. Mm. Um, so it's a classic Al Nico two humbucker. I just I'm just kind of smitten with this thing. Like I don't care about the Evertune part of this one i'm just happy that i know that tune is your favorite part i'm just happy to know that this model exists i mean the evertune i mean for a short scale like unbreakable tuning stability on a short scale Mm -hmm. does sound kind of cool so this definitely already sold i wonder how much it sold for at the end I don't think you could sell it if, or find it if it was on Goodwill. I don't know if you can nah, up old Goodwill listings. The listings don't stay up but on it was Goodwill, at a, I don't think. It was at $345 with just over a day left and 14 bids, which looks like a little bit of a bidding war. So it could have gotten up in that, you know, at least six seven hundred dollar range pretty quickly probably i bet there was people there were people camping on this way there were for people it. who were like had this item favorited on reverb but they're like i just found it on goodwill i just you know, found it I on be- goodwill i bet there were people who were looking at this just because it had the evertune in it they're like an evertune if i can snatch this up for four or five hundred bucks that's a good deal you know they were like hello <laughs> I can't go out of tune. If I if I end up tracking Ever down, tune. I shouldn't buy guitars. I shouldn't buy guitars. <laughs> <laughs> but if I end up tracking down one of these and talking myself into buying one, I kind of want to put one of those like hip shot behind the bridge GB bender things mm. on it, like a short scale mm-hmm. with a GB bender. Would that work with an Evertune? No, because I'm talking about if I find one the, one oh, of the stock yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to find this one that has an Evertune in it. I mean, I'm looking at your wall over here, and you could get rid of that guitar. I've been working on getting rid of guitars. I've got three open spaces on my wall over there, although I've got two guitars down here. So I have one open space. (laughs) I mean, I only see one guitar on that wall that would be like an instant throw Um, off of a bridge. Well, I've been trying to sell the, the Guild that's up there. Oh, right, yeah. Do you want to borrow it? you want a guitar? Okay. Dude, I... (laughs) Yeah, you're already out of room. Uh, I've got room. I just don't need any more guitars. I I should probably case my old Mexican Strat. Just case it and forget it. Is, I, is I, that the gold one? The it's the gold one. It's, right? it's margarita green, Steve. It's the this the uh, fingernail polish one. Is is that what that is? Yeah, it's kind of green. Uh, <laughs> it looks like gold. From it's here. not gold, Steve. It's green. And then I've got the the supersonic that I've been meaning to. Uh, right charity auction off i need to get around to doing that yeah i need to pick i need to pick a couple baritones to sell i have too many baritones but it's it's been really really hard uh i've been thinking about selling the acrylic bad cat well that was the one that was like the instant like yeah that one that one can go yeah let's not talk about that anymore i don't want to talk about that anymore (laughs) i had all these plans to do projects with it and then i just kind of ran out of momentum yeah that's fine other things happen find other guitars to do projects (laughs) with Uh, but yeah i I could make space it would be a fun thing to to do some videos of and be like here's a fun quirky thing 24 inch scale that's that's jaguar scale yeah, so it's like it's short scale, but it's not so short. It's not that my Duo Sonic is twenty two point seven. Yeah, so it's not crazy short, but it's still short. I just love how different that body is. It's a Telecaster, but it's just a little bit different. You I know? wonder if it's uh, what neck that is. If it's like a nine and a half, or if it's a seven, oh, you mean the radius seven and a quarter? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm I'm gonna make a bet that it's nine and a half. 
I mean, that's would be the standard, but I'm just thinking like, I don't know if I've ever, if I, I've never knowledgeably played a short scale with a nine and a half. I'm sure they exist. I don't even think of 24 a short scale. Let's be honest. I Have just, you ever played a Jaguar? I own a Jagstang. That's right. You own a Jagstang. So I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But so that's coloring, that's coloring your opinion. It is. I, that was like, and my, also offsets that, have a very specific bridge where they, they can't do flat radiuses. Wow. Interesting. Did not know that. Yeah. I just think of like, so that's what I think of as like 24. I don't think of 24 as short. I just think of it as shorter. That's like offset scale. There's short, shorter and shortest. This is sure. not shortest. This is shorter, shorter, yes. but it's shorter than a Telecaster though. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how that affects the, the signature sound of a Tele. Does that like, change the twang at all it probably does you think it gets more twangy or less twangy Le- definitely less less twangy i feel like my jack sing definitely does not like snap the way my strat or telecast you need that do. long steel cable sound to get that twang yep maybe even i, I mean wonder, i don't know I wonder what would happen if i strung one of my baritones with regular guitar strings you think it would be extra twangy it might be that might be a fun experiment if you tuned it up to e yeah that's what i'm saying you tune it all the way up to e do you think it would be able to handle that i don't know What's like the tension science of that? Because uh, you can put really heavy strings on short scales. Like I'll put 13s yeah. on my Duosonic, no problem, because the, the tension changes. And I know tension is not the correct word physics people out there. Like cable experts and string experts and stuff like that. Bridge builders. Right, right. You have you have different terms that you use for it. But you know, the tightness changes yeah. of a string. Ugh, it can, it can I, I take heavier very, strings. I just had a very misogynistic joke oh, coming to my head steve i'm not gonna say it steve just wanted to confess to everyone in the room that you had it and then you didn't say it i had it and i didn't say it steve is being an example to all right now you can you you're we're all gonna have thoughts from time to time it doesn't mean that you have to say them that's right loud. that's right yeah why go whoa go broke <laughs> Oh, I thought this was a free country. So what do you think, Steve? Uh, what would you pay for a miniature Telecaster with an Everton? Uh, Ryan, if this was a free country, I wouldn't be paying anything for this Telecaster. Because it'd be free. Because it would be free. Dude, I left my water in the outside in the outside. I room. thought this was a free country. Why do I have to pay for medical care and insurance? Yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like I would have trouble in my brain paying more than $400 for this. Because you know that they've sold around there because that's just what yeah that's modern player in my head should be like a 400 dollar yeah. guitar and it's made in china it's not like yeah. usa it's just it's, it's quirky unique it is uh you know it's rare because where else are you going to find a short scale telecaster other than in china apparently what? that's where they keep them i don't know yeah I, I i obviously they don't make them whether or not they will ever make this again that really pushes the value these are selling on reverb for, like you said, as low as four hundred, uh, as high as a thousand, as, as high as a thousand, and that was in August twenty twenty one, which was kind of like peak guitar value, probably. Like we're gonna late, blame it on COVID, huh? Late twenty one, early twenty two, early twenty two, they were still going like nine hundred. So um, I don't know. I just I, this isn't like worth that much to me. But I guess like if I saw one, knowing what I know about the prices. Maybe like five to six hundred, but I really I this doesn't appeal to me. It looks good. You don't want it at all. I don't I honestly for like everything that's going on here. You're not excited about for it. For everything at all. that's going on here, I'd just rather have like a classic vibe in the same right. same kind of finish. Get a get that pine, get the white pine. Hmm. That little translucent I mean, it's, white. It's hard to argue with just regular telecaster, but this yeah. is different, Steve. It's little. Oh, it's a little baby. It's a little baby Telecaster. Okay. Maybe it's got a little baby twang. Oh. Probably Bing. not. I mean, we probably are right. It probably doesn't twang very much. No. <laughs> it's probably a fun strummer, though. No, and I'm imagine, sure it's a fun guitar. And imagine people already go, like, oh, there's a big guy. And then he gets up on stage, and he's got a little Telecaster. He's like, <laughs> now, that, look, is that guy really big? I saw, what was I? I was reading something the other day. I was in a group. There was some guitar made by some company. Gosh, I don't remember what it was, but people were saying how like they wouldn't want to own the guitar because the body's small and they're like big guys. And I didn't, 
I didn't have the heart to be like, so how, how, how big a boy are you anyway? <laughs> like that was the thing that coming came into my head because unless you are like, I, I feel like unless you're like, you know, uh, was it Greg, Greg Koch or whatever, right, right. where that dude's like six foot five or six foot six or whatever. So when he made the gristle caster, it's a bigger telecaster. I feel like you really have to be like, and maybe these guys were huge. I don't know. Maybe these guys who were talking about it were yeah, both this like is the, six foot six. This is the opposite of the gristle, gristle master. It's, it's it is. It it's is. smaller in every direction. This is uh this is the type of this is the telecaster that Prince should have owned. Sure, sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um you know, some like you know, like Josh Scott doesn't like to play smaller guitars because he's big. Right. I'm pretty big too. I like smaller guitars. There's something about them that I connect with. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should, you know, if I was regular size, maybe I'd be a mandolin player. <laughs> you got anything else? Nope. Not oh, me neither. All right. What's next, Steve? This is the part of the show where we do housekeeping. Do we have uh, any new Patreon, Steve? We don't, but if you would like to be a new patron, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support these shenanigans. Let's keep moving. This week's show is brought to you by Chase Bliss Audio. Head on over to chaseblissaudio.com where you can get a fine pedal like the Habit. Or if you already own a Chase Bliss pedal but you're looking for a simple guide, pick up a field guide for your pedal. If it's available, go check it out. Chasebliss.com. This episode is also brought to you by Stringjoy. Stringjoy. Uh, You got the Orbiters last time, so you take the signature. This is the Orbiter. This is a coated string crafted in Nashville, Tennessee, but played on stages worldwide since 2004. String joy is maybe probably definitely your top choice for getting strings. You know what? If you don't really, this is a 10.5 to 50 set, but say maybe you want a little heavy bottom. You want a 10.5 on the bottom, but you still, you like that 46 on the low end. Uh, They'll make it for you. You know what? They'll put it together for you. What if what if you like to have two low E strings? Then you're dumb, but you could sure. make it happen with String Joy's custom string builder set. You don't want to have that bright, thin, doll hair high E. Ugh, you want two heavy, thick oh, boy low yeah, E. Yeah, yeah. You want it like that. Okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And you just replace that thin, bright E with a heavy, thick boy down there next to your thick thin bright b string there are definitely no repercussions for putting that on your it'll guitar. work out just use the link below because, just give it a try because when you do we get a little bit of kickback everyone's so creative <laughs> what? All right. yeah buy stuff from string joy use our link in the description because then we get some uh some money and this... we use money to, to buy food for our families this oh we didn't say that last ad was sent by michael kraus this next ad. I said it. You did? Yeah. Oh, well, this next ad is sent by Blake Bruns. It's a Carvin Texas shaped guitar. Is there no other information on this? Uh, I, so no I got all the information that came with it, Steve. Oh, okay. Based on this headstock, this looks late 80s, hey, early guys, 90s. When you send your ads, make sure you send the descriptions and the prices and stuff like that. I mean, maybe that was maybe that's all there was. I mean, it's it's eight hundred dollars on reverb. Maybe there was no other information. Did you find is that information in the screen grab? That's in the screen grab. Maybe there was no was no other information. Carvin Texas guitar. I weirdly I'm down with this. It looks like it's sold. Oh, there is a description. Don't know much about this. Has a lot of switches and electronics. Neck through construction. Spurzel tuners. Not sure of year. 1994 from Serial. I believe it's a Carvin one-off creation. Finish is not great with defects shown in pictures. Plays great. Has thin. Of course it plays great. It's a Carvin. Yeah, and it's it, shaped it, like it Texas. Great. It probably sounds huge. <laughs> I actually weirdly really like this interpretation of the shape of Texas. <laughs> Like they were like, yeah, we'll make you a Texas guitar, but we're going to like, we're going to tone it down a little bit to make it make sense for being a guitar. Like everyone's going to be able to tell that's Texas, but it's not like, you know, the Gibson map guitars where it's like, they're really, they really busted out the scroll saw to get the the coastline going. Yeah. If you sent this as a map of Texas to like a potential invader, uh, like invading nation, they would definitely screw it up. They would get the coast all wrong. Um, 
But that yeah, this is so it's a bit of a cartoony. You called this carving cheese? Uh something Texas cheese. Texas cheese because it looks like a piece of cheese. Yeah, it does look like a piece of cheese. It's got the contours of a piece of cheese. Well, they did the very they did the thing that Carvin does or did mm-hmm. that I don't like. All Carvins had the super rounded edges. Do Kiesel still do that? I assume they do. I don't think so. Kiesel's got harder edges. Mm. But Carvins had like such soft edges on their guitars. Yeah. And I always wanted them to have a little bit more of a cut to them. Like not not like sharp like like a Jackson or something like that, like a metal guitar, but like closer to like a fender where it's just a little bit of round on the edge. But they would do this really fat round edge on their guitars. And I think it works with this particular guitar because it gives it that slice of cheese sort of yeah. element. It works with yellow carbon. All mm. your yellow guitars work because <laughs> they look like melted cheese. Um, but for the most part, I'm not a fan of that. And then they have this, you know, this very modern pointy headstock. I wish that their bodies reflected the headstock a little bit more. You know, yeah. it's a, that's a strong headstock, it's a strong headstock, uh, a soft body. This is a soft text. This right has there. a lot of, it's got uh, a bunch of electronics hooked up to the switches and pots. Well, yeah. Uh, originally I thought that this would be a three way. Um, Cause it, in the comments it says like, Oh, don't really know what everything does. But now that I'm looking at it, there's like electronic circuits hooked up. This is an active pickup set. Yeah. Um, because my thought there are was circuit, like, there are circuit boards inside the guitar. Yeah. My thought was that this is a three way and then with, with independent splits and maybe a series switch. And maybe that could all be the case for the switches. No, there's extra going on here. Uh, but the, well, how do you know? How can you know, Ryan? How can you know? Well, look at the circuit board, Steve. There's like a computer in here. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll, I was going to say, like, those are the switches, but the knobs that are connected to the circuit boards, one is the pizza ordering knob, <laughs> one uh, direct dials Bill Gates. Right. Uh, one of them raises Steve Jobs from the dead, and the fourth one uh, turns the lights on and off at Elon Musk's house. This is a very important and special guitar. <laughs> it does a lot of things. God bless Texas. Right, right. If you if you turn the no, the knobs the right way, then you get to talk to the space station. You know, and if you turn the knobs the wrong way, well, Houston, we have a problem. I'm gonna guess that there's uh, some sort of active circuit in here. Really. Yeah. Was it the fact that I said like five s- seconds ago that these are uh, uh, this is an no, active I'm, circuit? No, I mean like like there's like and there's a battery pack. Well, it's got it's got active pickups. I'm not saying I'm saying like I'm saying it's got like a built-in like preamp or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or like maybe an effect. Like maybe there's a built-in delay or a boost or maybe even a, a, a dirt section or something. Like there's extra special stuff going on in here. It's more than just active pickups. It's a transformer guitar. There's more than meets the eye. Right. It's not just guitar. It's not just Texas. It's also a robot. Yeah. And it makes beautiful Julian fries. What? I don't know. Man. <laughs> that neck heel is bonkers. It's so dumb. What? <laughs> It's the worst part of this whole guitar. It is somehow the worst part of they this go, guitar. They got to the neck heel, and they're like, I don't know, man. It's a custom order. Yeah. What, what do they want from they us? Got, they got to the neck heel, and they were just like, shit. <laughs> the, the people, like, don't make guitars in the shapes of things, because things are never guitar shaped. Like, Texas is not a good guitar shape. Texas is actually not a bad guitar shape if you put the attach the neck to the panhandle. You got to turn it a different direction. You got to huh? turn this thing 90 degrees. Now you're attaching that te- that neck to the panhandle. The end of your neck hits right about around where Amarillo is. Right about there, huh? Mm. Yeah. Well, this is also it's they they well the neck is in the wrong place. They they put it too deep into the body. Yep. Sh- they should have moved the whole thing. They should have made Texas smaller. Mm. Is you the thing. You can't Don't mess with Texas, Ryan. Don't mess with Texas. I can't help but want to mess with Texas and make Mex- I think I just feel like Texas should be smaller is all I'm saying. It's too but big. Everything's bigger in Texas. It's too big. It's too big in Texas. 
That's the new catchphrase for Texas. It's too, it's too big. big in Texas. Things are too big in Texas. All right, Ryan, what, we, need, uh, we need help. Help us make Texas smaller, please. What Texas what, is too big now. What kind of band are you in uh, if you are buying this guitar? Punk band. You get this ironically. You hate mm. Texas. Like you, you do a big like red paint like X over the Texas. Like, no, I don't like Texas because I'm wow. so punk. Even if I'm going to play it South by Southwest, I'm going to, br- I'm especially buying this for my band's tour through Austin. So everyone in Austin knows we don't like Texas. We ironically spent money on a Texas guitar to show how little we care for that particular state. Otherwise, it's people who exclusively love Texas and they love to shred in the gnar, just <laughs> tapping and shredding and squealing and diving. And they want to have a computer in their guitar that solves math problems for them. That's this guitar. This is a NASA guitar, <clears throat> this is a space program guitar. I don't know about any of that. <laughs> I don't know. Ska band? Is this a ska guitar? Oh, this could be a ska guitar. This is a good ska guitar. But I'm thinking that this is a guitar for... Now, it's a little sacrilegious because you got dual humbuckers there. You got to work around it. Stevie Ray Vaughan cover band. All right. You know, it's, you know they could make it work. Uh, but maybe all the songs are sung in like a wisconsin Green Bay, don't you know, accent. Mm. That that way that explains why it looks like cheese because Wisconsin <laughs> cheese heads. Um, so Stevie Ray Vaughan, by way of Wisconsin, because Texas looks like cheese. Yeah, I'm also thinking that this could just be that a, all connects perfectly. Perfect puzzles. I'm thinking that this could also just be in an all Texas cover band. So you only play songs like "God Bless Texas." Uh, Texas Flood. You know who would play this unironically? All my exes live in Texas. Unironically, ZZ Top would be all over this. Yeah, that's true. ZZ Top would be all over this. Uh, the one non-Texas song that you would be allowed to play on this guitar is Tie a Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree. You mm-hmm. could play that song on here. You could also play songs uh, that reference things in Texas, but not specifically the name Texas, like... Uh, the song I'm going through the big D and I don't mean Dallas. Uh, it's a song about d- divorce. Ah. Uh, Amarillo by morning, which I somewhat alluded to earlier. Mm. Uh, oh, Marty Robbins, El Paso. There you go. That's pretty much all of the songs that I can think of that you could play with this guitar on it. What is that a sentence? That was a sentence, Steve. Is this good Perfect. English? Perfect. Perfect syntax. I got Nailed nothing it. else. That was that was my whole bit. I, All ma- right. I made it to the end of my bit. And How now much I'm was done. it? Eight hundred uh, plus one hundred shipping. Nine hundred dollar guitar. Nine hundred dollars. Uh, I say buy it. Absolutely, everyone should own one. It doesn't matter what state you live in. It's this sold. You, you need a Texas. It was too they, late. They accepted an offer. Apparently, well, they, you know, they the they offers. listened to me. They, this sold while we were doing the episode. They're like, oh, Ryan's right. Let's buy. Let's buy that. It's good. Are there any songs? Oh, uh, you could also play. Uh, is it uh, was it George Jones Galveston or was it? Um, uh, Ryan, Steve is going to be uh, thinking Rhinestone about this Cowboy. all night. What's the Rhinestone Cowboy guy? Glenn Campbell. Did he do Galveston? Who's saying Galveston? I don't know. All right, Galveston. You can cover Galveston. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> what's next? Uh, what's next? Keeper of the notebook. What's next is what's new, man. What's new? Let's open mail. Let's do some mail. Mail time. Mail time. Mail you time. might have noticed, Steve, that I'm wearing a stomp box, uh, stomp box parts. Stomp, dot com shirt. Stompparts.com box shirt. Well, yes. someone over there noticed that I've been using rocket sockets. Oh, yeah. I saw this. When I work on videos. So they were like, hey, can we send you some merch? And I was like, yeah, you can send some merch. So I'm wearing this shirt and I'm handing these to you, Steve, because I already own a set. And here's a sticker for you and a sticker for me. And I'm keeping the screwdriver because I'm selfish. But I'm giving Steve the rocket sockets. Thanks. 
Thanks, Rocket Sockets. A uh, Cusack have... turn a screw, which is a screwdriver. <laughs> Saltboxparts.com is owned by the Cusack family of brands, and they sell those rocket sockets, which these these are these are legitimately awesome. Like if you want to work on guitars or pedals without scratching up paint, they're a little hand socket set. Yeah. That are made out of plastic. They won't scrape up your finish. No, these these are a super good idea because yeah, every, awesome. every time I've taken the nuts off of a pedal, I've scratched the finish. Right. Guaranteed. Yeah. I Guaranteed. use them all the time. But this says they're made by Pepper's Pedals. Oh, well, maybe they just sell them. <laughs> Sorry if I screwed up the, the information there. But then that is a Cusack rocket socket. Is StompBoxParts.com part of Cusack? Yes. We don't know. Who knows? We don't know who sent these to us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it came from stompboxparts.com. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here is a package from Down Under. Oi! Do you know anything about this, Steve? I don't. Should I? It says Down Under Box is the name, and the business is Down Under Box. It's got a decent weight to it. I have no idea. Is this actually from Down? That is a customs declaration from Australia Post. Yeah. I'm thinking this might be from uh, Caleb Laws. That's the only down under listener that I know. Is that a knife? You call that a knife? I think that's a knife. It worked. I was trying to do a little crocodile Dundee bit there. Did it Did it land? Was that a good I joke? I don't know. What do we have it's an here? an old joke. Say good day to win. Down. Oh, it says on the who it's from on there. It's from uh, Adam Slater. Adam Slater. I was super all the way wrong. A taste of Australia. Inside is a special collection of Aussie treats picked just for you. Wow. I didn't know there were Aussie treats. What do we got in here? A special note just for you. This is this is wild. It's a whole like, gift box from Australia. Don't. Put too much Vegemite on the bread. Lots of <laughs> butter helps. And there's a picture of his guitars. What a wonderful and fun thing to send to us. This is cool. Oh, my gosh. Look at everything that's in here. Wow. We've got a wagon wheel, a choco-coated marshmallow and jam cookie sandwich here. Tim Tam? 11 Tim, biscuits. Tim, Tim Tams are great. Made with a r irresistible real chocolate. Oh my gosh. I, we're, I'm going to have to do a 60 cycle yum. This says stir fry. Scan me for our Vegemite stir fry recipe. Oh, I'm going to have to film my kids so this is trying like, Vegemite. This is like Vegemite. Oh, this is just Vegemite, but it says stir fry. We've got cheese twisties here. I'm assuming these are like Fritos. I don't know. It says and life's pretty straight without twisties. A Cadbury twirl. I've had their cream eggs. I've never had their twirl. Have you had any of their other? I yeah, yeah. I've had I've other? had other Cadbury bars. And then there's a bunch of loose uh, little candies in here. The Natural yeah. Confectionery Company lemon and strawberry. I don't know what this is. What, what does is, it say? It looks like it's going to be a Bazooka Joe, but I don't think it is. Alan's it's chocolate. Fant Fantales. I'm going to try it right now. And there's this little I Love Australia wallaby looking guy. Hmm. That's cute, right? I just dropped him. Him or her. Not totally sure what the, the internal flavor of this chocolate treat I just put in my mouth is supposed to be. It's chewy and gummy. This is good podcasting right here. I, I just realized that as you are unable to talk, I shoved this thing in my mm -hmm. mouth. This is this is so wild, guys. Thanks, Adam. That's super fun. Thanks for sending this, Adam. We're going to have a bunch of fun showing the treats to our kids and, you know, or just eating them all ourselves. I'm just going to just like, I'm about Vegemite. <laughs> you you, veg, you like veg, are you Vegemite guy? I've tried it before, and I, I remember understanding it and getting it, like why people would like this, but also being like, I don't know how much of this I could actually eat. Mm. So I'm excited to try to, like, introduce my children to it and see what they think. 
In my head, I like Vegemite, but I'm also possibly confusing it with Marmite. It says stir fry on it. Is this actual regular Vegemite? I don't. I'm it not says sure. scan for Vegemite stir fry recipe. I'm assuming that this is just regular Vegemite, but it says stir fry on the front. So maybe there is something special about that. If any of you want to send anything to our P.O. box, the address has been above here. Send anything legal that you want to send. <laughs> I'll say that. Food, if you send shirts, we'll wear them. Uh, if you want to send, uh, not homemade food, by the way. Packaged food is just <laughs> fine. Um, you stickers, like wh whatever you want us to hold up on camera and say, look at this, you can send it to us. So there you go. Offers on the table. What's next, Steve? Because uh, I don't have anything new. Do you have anything new? I do not have anything new. Honestly. By the time this episode airs, we have signed all the backplates for this. Oh, yeah. This is episode. This is episode. Hello. Welcome. This is episode. <laughs> this is episode. Uh, this episode. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. This episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. They make the wacka. We're going to sign. Well, they made the wacka. They made the wacka. We sold them all. Yeah, they're all gone. This is the most satisfying pedal to ever exist. You put your foot on here. And just like feel all those clicky, crispy pops and snaps. You've never stepped on so many switches at the same time. I need this for my back. Yeah. Oh, it's great on your back. You lay on it and it's like you crack your back. I'm cured. And you crack all the all the foot switches at the same time. We actually thought about like trying to give it like a chiropractor name or something <laughs> like that. But we landed on Wacka for Wacka Mole, but it's a Wacka Boost. It is nine boost circuits in one pedal, and you can't buy it anymore because it's already sold out. But if you want to make sure that you stay on top of all the hot things that Big Ear Pedals is coming out with, make sure you follow them on social media and get on their email list and everything else so you can know when crazy stuff like this drops. Huge thanks to Big Ear Pedals for being our friend for so long and supporting our show in various ways. All right. What next? What's next, Steve? I've been asking that a lot this episode because uh, I honestly can't remember. What's next? How do we do a podcast? <laughs> great, great question. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find the topic that we have for. Oh this yeah, week. it was something about uh, brands that I, like say like. Oh, there we go. This is signature from, collaborations. Yeah, this is from Nicholas Martinez. He says after the Fender Hot Wheels collaboration, and several other themed guitars, it seems the options are endless. Are there any guitar and non-music mashups you would love or hate to see? Example, a John Deere P bass. I think John Deere and guitar a guitar brand are a perfect match for for the. Yeah, record. it makes total sense. Everyone, um, get, yeah, everyone gets that connection. So, right? there's there's no explanation needed. Uh, giant tractors and riding mowers and guitars. It's a match made in heaven. All right, here's here's uh I mean Hot Wheels makes sense because uh, again, motorized vehicles that are very small. Hot Wheels are they oh like they're okay. They represent motorized vehicles. They represent motorized very vehicles. Very small yeah. representations of motorized vehicles and guitars. It's tiny tiny, tiny fenders blown up to big fenders. Okay. Yeah. You had an idea earlier. I don't want to steal it. I want to build on it. So okay. I want you to go first. Uh, I think it would be great to have like multiple multi-level marketing company connections. Like my first pitch was like Avon okay. and it was like LuLaRoe okay. and then like Herbalife. So I'm going to build on this idea, okay. right? So the whole thing in these, uh, in these brands is like, and, and all of these is that you get in and you, maybe you use the product a little bit, but mostly you sell to your friends. So this is a Fender Mary Kay collaboration. Mm -mm. You're selling Fender guitars and or Mary Kay makeup. The guitars are available in various shades of the Mary Kay makeup. However, after you sell so many guitars and or makeup packages at the very top tier, the Fender Mary Kay Mary Kay Stratocaster. The Mary Kay Mary Kay Stratocaster. Yes. That is... That is the top, right? That's the top one because there's already a Mary. You're familiar K with the Mary Kay, right? Fender, right? Right. So yeah. the Mary Kay brand, 
but in the Mary Kay finish. Right, which is like that pink Cadillac or whatever. That, that would be the equivalent to right, the pink right, Cad- right. Cadillac. But it now, because the Mary Kay is just like a translucent white. Now, there is a multi-level marketing angle that we could pitch to a guitar company. Like you're doing, you know, like house shows and stuff like that. What do they call it? Like when you when you, when you you host like a, a Tupperware party. A party. Tupperware party. Like a Tupperware party. LuLaRoe party. But it's like you're going from house to house like showing off guitars and pedals and amps and stuff like that. It's it's a multi-level marketing uh, event okay. opportunity. Opportunity. For, uh, you know, middle-aged dudes mostly. Right. That have a serious gear addiction problem. And instead of like, you know, just scrolling on the internet all day, we get together, we have hors d'oeuvres and we drink beer. We look at the new products. You know, we try to get you signed up Mm -hmm. so that you can start your own small business and, you know, be independent. Hey, I heard you love Fender guitars, but wouldn't you love to sell Fender guitars to all your friends? Right. And, you know, every time you host a party, Mm -hmm. you get... 30% 30% off for yourself. Yeah. You know, so yeah. like it pays for itself. All you have to do is invest in like $10,000 worth of product to get started. And then you get to keep all the profit. Yeah. You all, know, all you need to you do, have to buy the kit. all you need to do is buy 10 guitars for your party mm-hmm. at, at dealer cost. Right. 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 But you don't get to pick which models. They just kind of show up in a big yeah, box. They just you show know. up. They're random colors. But sometimes there's a unicorn in there, and everyone's going to want to buy if that. If you get the you know? Mickey Mouse finished guitar, that one, everybody wants that one. It's going to sell fast. <laughs> oh, and you can't return anything else. Yeah, and also you can't you can't increase your price beyond the price guide because they'll kick you out. And then you won't be allowed to ever make your money. So back. if you get the really good one, it's, you didn't win anything. Like, it's just, you know, you just have, had a good one, and that one's going to sell. So don't worry. You sold um, so, that, so that's one remember, remember LuLaRoe? Remember when everyone's yeah. spouses was really was remember really when I, and, that, and none of us were sitting around like, well, this doesn't seem like a scam remember at all. Remember when I came to your house for a LuLaRoe party, Ryan? Oh, I didn't throw it. I didn't say you did. I just said it was at your house. I know it was at my house. <laughs> I was there. It was it. The, the, those things look like chaos every time, and they <laughs> they were. What are some other? What are some other brands? Oh, uh, you know there could be a Zach maker. Wild Guitars and Target. <laughs> <laughs> Do I win? Did I win? <laughs> that can't be an original idea. It's too easy. It's too easy. There's no way a thousand other people haven't had that idea. I want to see Zach Wilde in a Target commercial. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know how the, the the little Target dog's name is Bullseye, so it's perfect. Right. I just want to perfect. S- I just want to see Zach Wilde strutting around, like shredding a guitar, wearing some Mossimo. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Buying some food stuffs. You know, you can get it all at Target. It's like a little Walmart. (laughs) Target, it's a little Walmart. (laughs) What? (laughs) You know, just just like Target house brands, Zach Wilde keeps moving up and up the neck. (laughs) Uh, What else is there? I don't think I can top that. I don't I don't think I have anything better. And like I said, I don't even think it was an original idea. I feel like I've read it somewhere. KFC Telecaster. Finger picking good. <laughs> Chicken picking good. Chicken picking good. You know that's that's, that's decent. That's gotta be a that's thing. decent. Uh does anyone make a triangle guitar? Can we make a pizza guitar? Is that too obvious? Yeah, pizza guitars have been done. There's the Pizza Hut guitar and stuff like that, and the, and the Andrew WK Pizza guitar. Uh, oh yeah, the Andrew WK one. Yeah. Uh, some kind of Quentin Tarantino guitar collaboration, but all the With guitars Martin? are just feet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he could do he could do pedals, and like all the advertisements have. <laughs> Uma Thurman's feet turning, <laughs> turning on the pedals, <laughs> like twisting the knobs. Uh, <laughs> it's a wah pedal. <laughs> it's like actually that could be okay. So so legit legit collaboration. 
uh, the pulp friction would be, is gone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> would be uh, Keely effects because Keely is like really good mm-hmm. at like the digital stuff. Right. And Lucasfilm mm. to put all those Star Wars sounds into pedals. You got one pedal that's just like vroom, vroom, like lightsaber. It's right, like, right. It's lightsaber Industrial. Sounds, Industrial light magic. Low pass modulator. What? I was trying to do an industrial light magic thing and it didn't it didn't it didn't work. That didn't work at all. No, it didn't. Yeah. Howard the Pretty. ducking reverb. <laughs> <laughs> Deep Lucas cut there. That's a that's a Disney property twice now. <laughs> twice over. Double Disney. Have you ever watched that movie? I watched it when I was like a kid. Yeah, everyone did. And everyone was permanently scarred I by seeing duck tits. In I don't it. really remember that much of it. Do you remember the duck tits? I don't. I guess I need to rewatch it. If you don't remember the duck tits, then you didn't actually Maybe watch I it wa- as a child. I might have watched it on like USA or something. I think everyone my age has a shared traumatic experience of watching that because their dad rented it because they assumed it was going to be a kid's movie because one, George Lucas, two, it looks like a cartoon duck. So they rent this movie and all of a sudden it's very adult and you're seeing uh, a anthropomorph- an anthropomorphized, anthropomorphized female duck in the shower with naked breasts. Wow. Yeah. So now Steve's, say, now Steve's going to watch it. You well, here's the thing, right? It's you're you're saying he's like, oh, you're saying it like it's a bad thing. No, you're saying like all these people were traumatized by it, but isn't our generation like where furries came from? Yeah, or where do you re- think that came from? But I'm saying like, is that really like a result of trauma? Like maybe people, all those people are really into it. They had awakened something inside yeah, of them. Yeah. So for me, it felt like an icky moment. I was it's like, it's like Gen Gen uh, X. Like I wanted to cry when I Gen saw Gen X is always like. What back in my day, we had Farrah Fawcett posters on our ceiling, and like, yeah, my generation a had of, a naked the, duck lady, bunch of millennials <laughs> running around going, like, I had a secret copy of Howard the Duck stashed underneath my bed. <laughs> yeah, I wore out that part of the VHS. <laughs> Yikes! Oh man, oh, what other what other collabos? There's got to be a, there's got to be some good. There's got to be something good here. Well, there's been a bunch over the years, like the Sobe guitars and stuff oh, like I that. And Mountain the Dew Sobe. guitars and, you know, pizza yeah, soda brands. There's been, excuse me, a, okay? lot of, a lot of car brands doing them. Yeah, there's got to be something kind of like that doesn't make any sense at all that would be entertaining to us. Uh, what's the, tr- the train company that just poisoned half the country? Oh, I don't know. I but that's what... dark. Where are you going with this? <laughs> There could, you know, it's very Chibson, like, to, to find some brands, like, uh, there'd be, like, an Enron dive bombing guitar or something like that, you know. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is that there should be a British Petroleum uh, Les Paul Ebony finished in Blackout black, guitar. blackest black yeah. paint. Was it Black 3 or whatever? It's the newest, blackest... The, right, like Vanta Black competitor, but then it has an an inlay of a of a drowning seabird. Jesus, <laughs> the twelfth fret. <laughs> Here we are. Literally, the, I would pay money for this guitar. You, literally, you, you, it's the only all black guitar I'd own, and it would be a joke to have a BP on the headstock. Literally, the week that we are recording this, a giant snowstorm is supposed to hit Ohio and potentially destroy half the United oh. States. And you're making environmental disaster jokes. Well, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. This this episode's two weeks out, Steve. <laughs> all if sorts of terrible things could happen. If this episode ever gets published. Yeah, we might we might have to pull the plug on this one. Hey. Uh, I mean, the BP oil disaster happened what, like four or five years you ago? You started with the train thing, though. I was trying to make it historical. Okay, all right, all right, all right. It probably wasn't. At least we're not good. bringing up Turkey. That's awful. What happened over there? All those people. Yes, there's no guitar should be made. Just saying. Okay. You, you, you lost <laughs> me. Through, through the brakes. You don't know about Turkey? I know about Turkey. Okay. 
delicious. Yeah, so we eat it on Thanksgiving. Jeez. <laughs> uh, no, I, I know I have coworkers that are like, I have a couple coworkers who are from Turkey okay. that were immediately like on the, like they were like, yeah, I spent all morning on the phone trying to find out what, if right. my family is, exists still. Every time I hear news from that, and it's been a while now, every time I hear news from it, it's like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. bonkers. So don't make a signature guitar around that particular historical event too soon. Uh, it's too soon. Gosh, there's got to be there's got to be a really. I'm thinking of like brand staples. Starbucks. Is, there's got to be a Starbucks uh, guitar. Star, how's there That's not a, a Starbucks an guitar? And oh, can, I got it. There's like a joke. In, there's a joke in there where there's sizes or something. Okay, collaboration. Fender. Uh huh. Pusheen. Jersey Mike's. It's a jazz master and it's made Mike's way. Oh my gosh. That's 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 it's the, a Mike's way jazz master. It's a Mike's way jazz master. Yeah. So it's gotta be finished in like Jersey Mike's colors, but then it's incorporating all of like Mike Adams like the things that he would do and to make the perfect covered in jazz olive master. oil and vinegar. I mean it doesn't that's I mean I I <laughs> I guess it's just dripping. It's just dripping. Just dude, dripping. if you're not get, if you're not getting your sandwich, Mike's way, are you even getting a sandwich? I ate there a lot when the kitchen was getting remodeled, dude. I, after I'm burned out. Yeah, I'm burned uh, out. I, I hear you. Yeah, I, you know what it is. That's the problem with Jersey Mike's is you have it and you're like, this is so like fresh. Everything tastes so fresh and so like clean, even. And then you're like, dude, I could eat this every day. And then you do eat it every day for like four or five straight days. And then you're like, I am never eating this ever again. Here's, here's the thing I ran into with okay. it. I can't get bacon there anymore because the bacon's not burned, but the oil they cook it in is. <laughs> I've never had bacon there. so Don't get the bacon is all I'm uh, saying. And that is, it's like that taste just started to like really be off-putting to me because I want that bacon. And I was getting my kitchen remodeled because I flooded the kitchen. So insurance was covering my food costs. So of course I'm going to get the bacon. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spring extra for the bacon because insurance is, is picking up the tab. But then I could just taste like, ah, oh, this tastes like burned bacon oil. They're cooking that bacon too who's, hot. Who's the company that made like, compare, was it Comparison? They made like the 27 fret guitars. There's been a bunch of 27 fret guitars. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, like uh, Hamer was Hamer. Making, okay. Yeah. Collaboration. Hamer. Steinway. 88 fret guitar. You know what? <laughs> maybe, maybe they got to go like multiple necks to get there. I don't know. 88 fret guitar. 88 fret guitar. And the, the, the like, okay. Cause it is possible. It's just micro. It's all micro frets. It's micro frets. And they're all Oop, the way. Oops. All micro they, frets. They cover the bridge pickup. But at that, at that scale, they're like, they, they become microscopic. Like they're technically frets. It's like a file. I think you would just end up doing like, okay, let's see, three 27, let's see, 88. You could do four 22 fret guitars and now you've got an 88. Right. You got four 22 fret necks and now you've got an 88 fret guitar. Here, here's, here's a wild suggestion for the future. Yeah. For a completely different timeline that maybe our great grandchildren will see where companies are fast and loose and friendly with, with each other. Who cares about competition? Mm-hmm. A, a Gibson Strat, a Fender Les Paul. They do a swippy swappy. I'm like, hey, guys, hey, look, guys let's have some fun. And they're, they, they do a swippy swappy with each other. I feel like they kind of have, are already doing that. But it's like, it's, it's but official. But it's not official. It's official. Okay. Like, they do it officially. Like, they shake hands. They're like... We're going to do a swippy swappy. Mm. And they come out with models of each other's guitars and pay licensing to each other. And it's a, it's a big pissing contest to see who can get the best, best sales making each other's guitar. All right. Here's my last one. Okay. Collaboration. Uh, it's got to be a bolt on net company. I, we keep coming back to Fender with these, I guess. But it yeah. Could, it could, oh, it could be with, uh, was it Chiaro? Is that the name of the guitar? They make the folding neck guitars. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Collaboration with Pfizer. <laughs> the Viagra, the Viagra tar, Viagra tar, Viagra tar. The neck's like this, and then when you want to play, you're excited to play. The neck goes. Oh How about a Home Depot guitar? And then Bob Dole's like, "Down boy." <laughs> How about a Home Depot guitar? 
but all the wood is just like warped and twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Like you keep trying to find a neck. It's a kit. Like you go to Home Depot and they, they're selling necks and bodies and, and a kit. It's a whole kit you can put together. And you just keep going through the piles of, of, of the necks. And you're like, oh, this one's got a knot in a really weird place. They all have knots, but like, ah, oh, which one? Like, the, ah, like you just, you're like, do I pull out every single neck? I think you have to, to try to find like one good one. But it's a whole pallet of them and the wood's still green and wet. That'd be a fun collaboration. <laughs> and then the pit guards are themed after the orange buckets. And it's got a little picture of Homer on there. Like, Oh my God. Thanks for buying the fun. guitar. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I said that I was going to do my last one. I said that was going to be my last one. The, the side I of the, I the side. I, have, of, I don't know if I have another one. The anymore. side of the neck is mm -hmm. a measuring tape, like a yardstick. Be pretty good. That would be pretty good. I like that idea. Yeah. I, I'd like to see that on a regular guitar, like a, a measuring stick on a fretboard. Yeah. yeah. So you can be like, oh, how long is my pedal? You can just hold it up to your neck and be like, oh, now I know how long it is because like, I have a measuring. Very useful information. Yeah. How <laughs> and then long you, you can see your pedal. exactly what scale your guitar is because like, oh, yeah, here, here, there it is. <laughs> At the 12th fret, I can see the exact measurement of my neck and I just double yeah. it to... Figure out yeah, how long you guys scale do, is. Just do a little math. Yeah. All right. A 24-inch scale guitar would be 12 inches from the net to the 12th fret. Yes. Yeah. Was this entertaining at all? Did anyone care about any of this? No. Like uh, oh, hopefully uh, Nathaniel, or uh, sorry, Nicholas uh, was entertained. You know, it, maybe if we did cash rewards for topics, we would get some really, really good topics. I don't think so. Uh, this ad was sent by <laughs> Daniel Esporma. <laughs> Uh, it says, uh, Gibson custom surf G SG 2006, $1,800, $200 oh, shipping, right? Uh, uh, I think so. they want two yeah. grand for this. OM surf G custom built Gibson surf G 2006 Gibson USA SG with a Rainville signature jazz master pickup in the bridge. Yamaha, uh, okay. You can't, that you can't have two bridge pickups. Yamaha Jaguar dual coil bridge pickup with coil switching, massive vibrato, goto bridge, and tuners, and all USA electronics. Two thousand dollars. Functionally, this has a bridge and a middle pickup, but that is one single pickup. That's the the bridge pickup right. from the Yamaha SGV four hundreds. I think there was a four hundreds and the six hundreds, and I forget which. And they're one. calling it a Jaguar pickup because it's got like the metal. It has a claw on it. Claw. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, the this Jazz is, Master pickups in the neck. There's no. It's just. This is a wild design. This is buck wild. This is like so much work. Is this worth two thousand dollars? Is it worth two thousand dollars? That's. It's in Canada. A huge question. Is it worth two thousand dollars? I wish this thing had a, an offset bridge on it. A Mustang bridge would be. Really super Instead cool. Instead of a this. Jazz Master bridge? No, it's got a it's or got a jazz. tunematic on it. Oh, the bridge. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I was thinking of the trim. Also, is that the 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 neck pickup is not gonna sound exact it's not gonna sound like a jazz master neck pickup because it's not really in the right position. It's it's too far it's too it's too close to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Um I bet it sounds good. This is wild. I I love how clean the execution is. All like right. the the pit guard is is brilliant. I never even thought that a, a Jazzmaster vibrato mm -hmm. could work on an SG, but I I can't think of why it wouldn't work now that I look at it. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm having so many confused feelings right now. <laughs> it, it's got some cool ideas. Okay. I kind of just, I kind of wish they had just heck? done the Yamaha pickup and left it at that. There's something. Why, why is that? I think the, and, the no, and no neck pickup, no neck pickup or just, or just done. I think they should have done one or the other. The combination is wild. And I don't hate it, but I think it would have been a 
better all around piece if it wasn't mixed pickups like that. Okay, here's here's my question to you. Uh huh. You ha- well, okay. First of all, uh, eighteen hundred. Yes, no. Well, plus two hundred shipping. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand yes, dollars. I I can't imagine. I can't imagine this selling for two thousand dollars. It is so niche. Sure, but you are kind of the person for this niche. Yeah. Right? But I'm having a tough time. I'm having a tough time because if I was gonna, if I was gonna pay two thousand dollars for a guitar mm-hmm. that had these pickups, I'd be, I'd be starting with a Yamaha and a Jazzmaster. Right. So, so at its at its core, because I want one of those Yamahas, and you at, know I want Jazzmasters because I have Jazzmasters. At its core, nothing. Nothing on this guitar. I can imagine someone buying this, but it would be hard. It's a hard sell at $2,000. At its core, nothing on this guitar except maybe the bridge is stock. Right? Nothing None else, of the electronics. Nothing else is stock. <laughs> are the tuners not stock? I don't think the tuners are stock. Okay. Maybe they are, but these are like Melody Maker style tuners, so I don't think the tuners are stock. So, this is a, I believe, started as a 2006 SG Special. You know this thing's missing wood underneath a pick guard, too. All it says is 2006 Gibson USA SG, so that's correct, Gibson USA, but I think this is an SG Special faded finish from 2006, makes sense. Everything is replaced. You can get one of these stock Gibson guitar for about a thousand dollars. So the question then is getting the routing done for everything under the pit guard, the routing done to get that vibrato system on there. Is that worth and then obviously the pickup. <laughs> Excuse me, the pickups. It, but is that worth another thousand dollars? It's only worth it if you want it. <laughs> Which you don't. Well, you you want it, but do you want it a thousand dollars? How much? How much do you want this, Ryan? How much this does was theoretical local, and you I could want this? Pick, if, if I if I could go try it out, yeah, and then pick it up local, I feel like I would be curious. But like it's such an odd bird. It's such an odd yeah. guitar. Like I I can't even conceptualize wanting this. Mm-hmm. But if it was local and I could go try it, like if it was in a shop or something like that, I'd pro- I'd drive to a shop to go check this, this out. This isn't a shop. It's in Paul's Boutique Okay, in Toronto's Kensington Market. Okay. Someone in Toronto, go check this thing out. Um, I would go drive to check it out. I feel like I would have a tough time being tempted over like $800. Damn. That's, like, a, that's a price cut. That's, le- pr- that's less than what the stock version of this. I know. Because there's so much weirdness going on here. Like you can't you can't take this back to stock. Right. Because of the, the, the vibrato. You could put a, an SG pickguard on here and take it back to Humbuckers and have an SG with a Jazzmaster vibrato. But this is this is a really unique, weird niche here. Like, what is even going on? What's it going to sound like? I mean, that Yamaha pickup in the bridge might sound amazing. It might sound amazing. The Jazzmaster pickup in the neck might sound amazing. The only person who's going to look at this guitar and be like, wow, that's cool. Here's a conversation piece is very specific other guitarists. Like, no one no one in an audience who's just, like, at a bar to listen to music is going to think anything when they look at this guitar. It's not going to register to them that, I feel as like different. You, I feel like you could say that about. I know. Any, like, uh, you know, if you go, if you play a surf show with a Les Paul, no one in the crowd's going like, "Oh, that guy's playing a Les I know, Paul I know, and makes surf music." I'm weirdly, I'm very, I'm very weirdly apprehensive about this. Like, it's so weird that I'm my body's rejecting. I got it. this super weird guitar, and nobody in the audience appreciates it. But it's like, you know, like guitars, they're, they're instruments, but they're also stage props, sure. you know. Sure. Like, 
if you're going to go this weird, I don't know. I'm having a really hard time processing this guitar right now. Like the, the, the price is, is cuckoo bananas for how weird this is. <laughs> But I get why it is that price, like because it's uh, because of the parts, and the parts, and what it started out uh, as. Not because it's in Canada. How far is Ben Coombs from Toronto? I know he's up that way somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. What do you think? What do you think someone should pay for this, Steve? I was thinking like fourteen dollars. No, like fourteen hundred right. somewhere around there. Like I think there's some upgradiness to it, but this you know, is this is an eBay situation. I'd say like fourteen tops. I'd say like twelve hundred to be like, oh wow, that's a cool guitar. That's a great price on a cool guitar. Fourteen hundred is probably around where my interest ends. Okay, I feel like putting this on eBay at minimum bid fourteen hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and to see what happens. Maybe there will be a bidding war. Maybe there will. Maybe it'll go over two grand. Ooh. Maybe it won't sell at all. Either way, you've lost nothing. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybelline guitar needs to be a guitar. Maybelline guitar. Also, like things like this, sometimes I suspect that people put them on reverb more as like a social media post. Like, hey, everyone, look at what I did. Do you think people, uh, the well, there are 52 people watching this. Yeah, because they're sharing it, it with their friends. It was listed six months ago. No one's buying this. No one's bought it. Uh, I'm telling you, this is a really weird bird. And I'm not against people playing SGs in, in surf music. There's actually a, a band that's, that's well known for that called the Insect Surfers. Um, if you were posting on Reverb something like this, do you think it's more likely that people are posting these ads on Reverb to get on our show or to get on Ryan Bruce's show? <laughs> I think that I think that people have do I think people do a thing where they, if they have something cool, they just want to get messages. They'll about it. they'll put it up at a price that seems like kind of ridiculous, and they're like, "Well, if someone wanted to pay that, I'd take it." But mostly, it's like, "Hey, everyone, look at the cool thing I have," mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they want it. It's a way of getting it documented, right? Like documenting your collection through reverb. I think there. I think that's going on. I think people are doing that. I don't know if this guy is doing that. He very. I mean, this is a shop. This could also because this is a shop. The very scenario I explained to you, where if this was in a shop, I would. It was listed six months ago. It's well past the ninety day mark. But <laughs> here's the thing: because I would drive to go check this out, mm-hmm. they know that other people would drive to oh. check it out. Now they're in the shop. Remember that Velcro guitar? There was two acoustics Velcro together. Yeah, yeah. And they they said that they would not sell it. Yeah. Even though they had it listed. It was just there for people to want to see it. It was to get people in the door. It's the freak show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come check out the freak. You know, that's what this guitar is. They've had it listed for six months at a price where they know no one's going to buy it, but maybe they will because they want people to come kick the tires and come into the store and maybe they'll buy something else in the store. Maybe they'll just buy strings. They're there. They need strings. Maybe they'll see some other guitar. They're like, oh, yeah, I've been thinking about those. I'll pick that up. I'll try that. Maybe they buy an amp, you know, a pedal or something like that. This gets people in through the door. This would get me in through the door. I don't know how I feel about it, and I wouldn't be able to sleep until I touched it if I knew it was right. local. If this was, like, at Moe's. If be, this was at Moe's. You'd be, a, you'd be there tomorrow. Or if it was at, like, Moonlight or, you know, something if like that. If it was that. at Music Central. Right. Let's list every guitar shop in San Diego. <laughs> no, I would I would go check if it, it out. was at Sam Ash. Even if it was at that place all the way up. Yes, all the way up in Oceanside. I'd go all the if way up If it was there. at Dusty's. At Dusty's, yeah. Dusty's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If Oceanside guy had it. Carlsbad Village Guitar. <laughs> all right. What's next, Steve? We, right we got to do the AVC, man. We have to we have to pick. Adventures Club. A- you got your pick? AVC. AVC. We got the short scale Telecasters yeah, sent got, to us by Michael Krauss. We got the Texas Cheese sent to us by, by Blake Bruns. And we got the Surf, Surf G, G from Daniel Asporma. There we go. We got a couple of we got a couple of regulars in here. Michael Krauss, Daniel Asporma are regular contributors. I feel I feel and we got the newcomer Blake, Blake Bruns. I feel a little split on these, Steve. Mm, I already I know what I'm picking. I know what I'm picking. 
You tell me what you're picking and see if you can convince oh, me. Interesting. I'm picking the Texas cheese. The Texas cheese. That the carving. The Texas cheese. It's, what criteria are you using to pick that? Uh, it's the dumbest one. It's Texas. You think that's the dumbest one? I think it's definitely no. It totally the is dumbest the dumbest one. one. It's definitely the dumbest one. Uh, with the short scale Telecaster, you know, you don't say like, oh, well, what what kind of band do you need to be in to get a short scale Telecaster? Like, it's a Telecaster. It will play every genre, like. Surf G, what what genre, what kind of band would you be in to right, play the right. Surf G? It's in the freaking name. It's a Surf G. But Texas Cheese, you got like you got options. Do you, do you go for like all right? You convinced me, Texas Texas, Texas Cheese. cheese. Yeah, there I, we go. I, I mean, I didn't have any a uh, leg to stand on to convince you otherwise because I was so split. But yeah, I think you're right. I think the yeah. Texas Cheese Carvin is so, is the way to go. Congratulations, Blake Brun. Hopefully, we will get in contact with you this week. And hopefully you reply to our email so we can send you a $25 gift certificate. And if not, that's an extra $25 in my pocket at the end of the year. Is not it? really. Are you taking that money? No. <laughs> Maybe we should keep track of everyone that doesn't claim their prize and, and we do something we just, fun. We just split it. Or yeah, we just, we just buy a bunch of booze. I think we should just buy a bunch of... Dude, I can't... I got too far to drive after this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this, uh, this song was sent by Caleb Laws. He cc'd Peter J. Stevens, who's also, I think, a listener to the show. He says, hi, Ryan and Steve. Thanks for keeping the channel so relevant and inter- interesting this past year. I don't know about Has it been relevant? Of Has it been interesting? None of those things are true. Uh, you've kept at least two of us inspired and motivated enough to keep buying more gear we don't really need. Pete and I somehow managed to be semi-productive late last year, collaborating from afar, and releasing our debut single this week. We would be grateful and honored if you can use it in the show. Tone Rider is made up of Pete Stevens and Caleb Laws, a Brit and a Kiwi living and collaborating in Australia. Austria? Australia. But they, Austria. Australia. Might. Oh, mate. Okay. Austria. <laughs> <laughs> Not where Andy lives. <laughs>
That was a chill jam. That was fun. That was called Taquito Con Queso. And Cadbury Twirl. That's an interesting treat. It's very crumbly. It's a... Uh, it's all just chocolate, but the chocolate inside is like laced yeah. and airy. Very interesting. And then those, these little like, I thought these were going to be soft. No. These are hard. You don't chew those. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple things here we can't split out. We each get to take a wagon wheel home. Sure. Uh, do we want to leave these here to taste them another time? Or yeah. Do you not care about them? Um, I don't. I mean, if you want to have them with your kids, that's cool too. All right. I mean, I've had Tim Tams. I, I'm pretty sure you've had Tim Tams. I think these are the ones where uh, there's no picture in here, but there's a thing called you got to look it up. Tim Tam Slam. The look Tim Tam up. Slam. So basically, you got yourself. Well, you would. You you'd have to do it with like hot here, chocolate, maybe. Here, let's let's try these real quick. Uh, but Tim Tam Slam is like you bite the corners off and then you use it as a straw. These look like Cheetos. You use it as a straw? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a Tim Tam Slam. Tastes like Cheetos. But it's like more Parmesan-y. Mm. Like a Parmesan-y Cheeto. Why are they called Twisties? They're they're Puffies. Because they're made by not... I don't know. It says on the back, life's pretty straight without Twisties. These are the cheese variety. Does that, does that imply there's a non-cheese variety of twisties? Maybe. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay grounded.